Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. The Anycubic Cobra 3 Max is here. This is Anycubic's latest large format 3D printer, boasting an impressive 420 mm by 420 mm by 500 mm print volume. That's an 88 liter build volume, or as Anycubic puts it, two carry-on suitcases. This matches the print volume of the Cobra 2 Max, but brings with it all of the advancements of the Cobra 3 series, including the ability to print up to eight colors in a single print thanks to the Ace Pro. Imagine an eight color print filling up this entire print volume. Incredible. So while I put it through its paces for my full review, I wanted to give a quick first look for those that might be interested. This printer is not sponsored. I purchased this printer myself thanks to the support of my Patreon members and viewers like you. I do have affiliate links below, so if you if you are interested, you can use those to help support my channel at no additional cost to you. So starting with the Cobra 3 Max itself, this is a filament-based 3D printer with the huge 420mm by 420mm by 500mm print volume. This print bed is large enough to fit a full 10x10 gridfinity build plate. It's absolutely massive. I'm planning large cosplay prints. You can easily print entire helmets with this print volume. Just like the original Cobra 3, the Max is a bed slinger printer, with the hot end moving left and right on the x-axis, up and down on the z-axis, and the bed moving in the y-axis. The x and y axes are belt driven with metal wheels, and the z-axis use rubber v-slot wheels. The entire frame is heavy and feels very sturdy, and the large braces supporting the x-axis makes this a solid printer. Z-axis has two motors, and the lead screws are connected with a belt up top to keep them in sync. The y-axis also has two motors, which is needed when trying to move a print bed of this size. This printer isn't going to break any speed records. Anycubic advertises 10,000 millimeters per second per second max acceleration and print speeds of up to 600 millimeters per second. But their profiles on the Anycubic Next slicer are much more conservative. I was seeing print speeds between 200 and 300 millimeters per second. That still feels very fast when you see this print bed flinging around at those speeds. You'll want a sturdy table for this printer. The huge print bed uses a double-sided magnetic, flexible spring steel PEI build plate. This makes it very easy to remove prints. Like the Cobra 3, there is a nozzle wipe strip at the back. The Cobra 3 Max has all of the features of modern clipper firmware. The automatic bed leveling and automatic Z offset makes for the perfect first layer, even across the entire build plate. It also has built-in vibration compensation for input shaping, which reduces ghosting or echoes at the edges of prints. The real magic happens when you connect the Cobra 3 Max to the Ace Pro, enable multicolored printing. I'm still waiting on my Ace Pro unit to arrive, but it'll work just like the Cobra 3. You can connect one Ace Pro for printing up to four colors, or connect two Ace Pros together for up to eight colors in a single print. And it will purge and wipe the nozzle when switching between colors on each layer. If you've seen any of my recent Cobra S1 videos, then you'll know that I've been experimenting with how much poop these multicolored printers produce. That's the wasted material when switching colors. I'm curious to see how the Cobra 3 Max handles the poop. This is where the large print bed comes in handy. The amount of poop is solely dependent on the number of color changes, which is just a matter of how many layers there are in a print. Whether you print one of an object or 10 of an object, the number of layers and color switches are exactly the same. With a massive 420 by 420 millimeter print bed, you can pack the max bed full of copies of a print and drastically reduce the wasted material. Combined with the skip object feature that's already enabled on the max, if one of those objects starts to fail, then you can tell the printer to skip that object without needing to cancel the entire print. That's even more important with this large print volume. In addition to multiple colors, the Ace Pro can also act as a filament backup. This is an improvement to your normal filament runout detection, where the Ace Pro will automatically switch to the next spool of the same material and color when your first spool runs out. It also has RFID detection, so if you use any Cubics filaments, it'll automatically detect the filament type and color. Finally, the Ace Pro also acts as a filament dryer with its built-in heater. This will remove moisture from your filament, which if you've seen any of my past moisture experiment videos, dry filament greatly improves print quality. So here are a few of my first prints over the last 24 hours. These were all printed using high-speed PLA provided by Sunlu. If you are interested in high-quality 3D printer filament, check out Sunlu. They have a large variety of materials and colors. You are sure to find the right filament for your next project. Thank you, Sunlu. The first thing I printed was the included 18-minute 3D Benchy. That's an impressive speed. And besides a fair amount of stringing, it turned out great. The other included sample files also look really good. This shark bottle opener has consistent top and bottom surfaces, thanks to the auto bed leveling. 
and this Fluxy Shark looks the same, and popped right off the print bed. My initial torture test also showed the same stringing as the 3D Benchy. This is using the default PLA profile provided by Anycubic in their Anycubic Slicer Next. I'll have to continue testing retraction settings to try and get that stringing under control. But the rest of the print looks great. Overhangs and bridging are solid, with only the slightest amount of drooping at the longer stretches. This Captain America bust also turned out great, and printed in just over 8 hours. The input shaping did its job. There was minimal echoes on all of the crisp edges, especially around the back. The layers seem consistent, and I don't see any artifacts. Finally, I had to test out the full 420 by 420 mm print area with this Gridfinity base plate, which is exactly 420 mm tall. And to my surprise, the Cobra 3 Max printed it with no problems. The bottom layer is perfect, every line stuck to the print bed, and the entire plate printed in just over 5 hours. I am impressed. Assembly was very straightforward. The Cobra 3 Max comes mostly assembled. The XZ gantry and base are attached for shipping. You just had to unscrew them and screw the gantry into position. Screw on the two support rods, attach the print head, attach the touchscreen, and plug in the cables. It took about 30 minutes total to start it up and run through the automatic calibration steps. The manual does a great job with walking you through all the steps needed. I think anyone would be able to get this up and running with no issues. So I am very impressed by the Anycubic Cobra 3 Max right out of the box. Prints are coming out excellent, even though I haven't done any tuning on the profile. I can't wait to receive the Ace Pro and really be able to test out the 4 and 8 color printing capabilities, and see how those compare to the Cobra 3 and Cobra S1 versions. I'm going to be putting the Cobra 3 Max through its paces over the next month as I finish my full review, so be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on that. And if there is anything you wish to know about the Cobra 3 Max, or anything you'd like me to test for my reviews, let me know in the comments below. There were a lot of great suggestions on my Cobra S1 first look video, and I think I've covered them all, so that review is coming out shortly. So leave me your questions about the Cobra 3 Max, and I hope to answer them just the same. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.